everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking through all of my favorite kitchen utensils slash supplies, accoutrement type things. So it's not gonna be a cooking video per se, but I know a lot of you guys are home cooks or like to make my recipes, or maybe you're just starting out in the kitchen and you want to expand your kitchen supplies. Uh, this video would be great for you because I'm going to share my top 10 tools that I use the most frequently in the kitchen. And let's be honest guys, there are a lot of gadgets and fancy things out there that are like all over, I don't know, Instagram ads, Amazon, and you think you might need them all when you're starting out in the kitchen, but really you just need a basic set of tools that work well and you can pretty much accomplish anything. So I wanted to walk through the tools that I love the most and the ones that I use most frequently. And honestly, none of these are particularly expensive either. So hopefully you guys find this video helpful. I'm also going to be going through appliances in a future video as well. So stay tuned for that. So my number one tool and suggestion is honestly a good knife. And I know a ton of chefs say this, a lot of people say this, but it really is true. Once you have a good knife, your kitchen skills are going to get so much better. Developing knife skills is key. And I just think through hours that I've spent in the kitchen cooking and making recipe videos and stuff, am I scaring people by waving this around? Cause I'm kind of scaring myself, um, is by using a good knife. Uh, I used to have really crappy knives in college. And I feel like when you have crappy knives, you don't really realize how bad they are until you use a good knife and then you have to go back to using the bad knives. Um, then you can't cut anything and all of your things are slipping under your cutting board and your cuts are not as even either and the knife is like sticking to the vegetables and you can't cut a spaghetti squash, etc. And it gets really frustrating. So I would recommend a good set of knives. There are a lot of knives out there at different price points. If you're just going to get one, you should get a chef's knife, which is about this size. And you can pretty much cut anything with this knife. I actually just recently got this one. It was a gift from my friend, but it's by the brand Victorinox. And it has been consistently rated one of the top affordable chef knives. So if you can afford this one, I would suggest this, but I would honestly get the nicest knife that you can personally afford. And you really only need one knife. But that being said, you're only gonna have one knife, so you need to keep it sharp. Get a knife sharpener or go and get your knife sharpened. I think the phrase is that your knife should be able to slide through a tomato skin without you having to do any effort um, to cut it, and that is sharp. So obviously be careful, practice good knife skills, don't cut with your fingers like this, use a clamp. There are lots of free knife course videos out there, and this isn't a knife skills video. If you can invest in one thing in your kitchen, honestly, invest in a knife and a sharpener. The next thing that I'm going to recommend is also pretty basic, but it is a cutting board. Um, it's really frustrating when you're trying to cut vegetables and your cutting board is slipping all over your kitchen counter. So I would recommend a heavier duty cutting board. Personally, I don't like to cut on those glass cutting boards or the metal ones because they make a really kind of jarring grating sound um, when the knife actually hits the board. So I like to use a wooden cutting board. Honestly, this one is from Ikea and it's pretty cheap and it does the trick. If you are having problems with your cutting board slipping on your countertop or surface, you can just place a wet towel underneath and then place the cutting board on top and it won't slip. But also I recommend using wood over plastic. I actually just started doing this within like probably the last two months, but I read online that every time you use a cutting board, obviously your knife is hitting the board. So it's possible that fragments of the cutting board could get into your food, especially when you're using plastic. And then I was like, wow, I cut a lot of vegetables and I'm vegan and I eat a lot of vegetables and that's a lot of plastic that could be in my food. So it kind of freaked me out. I don't really want to consume cutting board plastic. So now I stick to wood. The next tool that I use the most frequently that some people may not use as frequently, but I would strongly recommend is a mandolin. And if you're unfamiliar with a mandolin, it's a device like this. There are some that are uh, not handheld, I guess freestanding, or they'll just sit on your counter and you go back and forth. But I personally like this one. It's definitely not the most expensive on the market, but it's also not the cheapest, um, but it has nice bridges in it. So you can set it on a bowl. Um, so it stays pretty secure. I oftentimes, most of the time, just hold it with my hand and will shred things over this grate. And the one thing I also like about this is there's a lock setting so I can slide my hand on this right now and I'm not going to cut myself, but there are also different adjustable settings so I can make really thick cuts, but I can also do it super, super thin. So if I'm cutting something like onion that I want to be really thin and in a salad and I don't want it to be overpowering, you can cut it this way. And slicing vegetables takes a lot of time and while I do have the knife skills to do it, it is just so much faster 
with a mandolin. Um, I will say you need to be safe with a mandolin. I cut myself way more on this than I would like to admit. So there are solutions. You can use a little mandolin thing that comes with it. It's supposed to pierce the vegetable and you can slide back and forth. Another thing you're supposed to use an open palm when you slide on your veggies so you don't cut yourself. I don't really like to use this. I find it cumbersome. So to be honest, I'd rather just cut myself every once in a while. But another thing you can invest in, I don't think this is essential, but if you are scared of cutting yourself, is this metal glove. And the mandolin cannot cut through this glove at all. So when you're sliding vegetables and if you accidentally slide your finger on it, it's just gonna get the glove. The next item that I'm going to recommend is this microplane and this just essentially grates vegetables really finely. Um, I like to use it for citrus zest, which I use in a lot of recipes. I think it can add a lot of flavor. It's also really good for ginger and garlic if you need something to be really finely minced. Honestly, I would not recommend getting one of those garlic mincers. I think they're a pain in the butt to clean and I actually do own one, but I hardly ever use it. I'll either just mince it finely with my knife or run it through the microplane. Um, so I would recommend the mandolin and the microplane. Uh, these are my actual items, but I just wanted to show you this one item that I have. Um, if you don't want to buy two of those things and you'd rather buy one multi-purpose tool kit, I do really like this. I bought this before I bought the mandolin. It has a little uh, bin in it and it comes with different attachments. So this is the finest grate um, and you could use it like a microplane. It's not as fine, but it would still do the trick. And then it has a larger grater. And then it has two mandolin attachments. I've honestly never used this one. I think it's supposed to like make it into ribbons. And then this one is mandolin. I don't like how this mandolin is not as adjustable. Um, so I really don't use it anymore. And honestly, I hardly ever grate vegetables. I mean, if you have a vegetable grater, that's great. Haha, <laughs> great. But I would either use my food processor or I usually just chop things by hand. And I don't really think a lot of my recipes call for grated vegetables. And if I am cutting something finely, like carrots or something for a salad, I just do it on my mandolin and they're circles instead of strips. So. The next thing that I use the most in my kitchen is my silicone mats. And you guys have seen me use these all the time. They are food grade nonstick mats that you can put on top of your baking sheets. Um, they're great for oil-free cooking or just cooking with less oil in general. And it's also a way easier cleanup uh, to scrub one of these mats than to scrub a baking tray that has burnt stuff on it. So I would really recommend these. I got a set of two on Amazon. They're really affordable and I also really like them because I think they get hotter than a standard baking tray. So it helps to caramelize your food a little bit more when you use these mats. So, I mean, if you guys watch my recipe videos, you know I use these all the time and I can't speak highly enough of them. And that's also a great waste-free option where instead of using parchment paper or wax paper to bake things with, you can just use this and you can wash it and you can use it again and again and again. Next up, this is also pretty basic. I mean, guys, I'm assuming you already have like measuring cups and spoons so i didn't include that in my list but i did just want to touch briefly on cookware personally because i do cook oil free i have a whole video about this um if you're not sure why i will link it here in the video but i use non-stick cookware for the most part sometimes i'll use cast iron but i honestly prefer to cook in non-stick cookware especially when i am cooking oil free because nothing sticks to the bottom of the pan and i know some people and there are certain brands that are specifically known for not being the best in terms of what their nonstick cookware is made of. Um, but I use these two brands at home in my personal kitchen and my professional kitchen, and I am happy with them. Um, they work really well. I use these pots. A lot of you guys ask me for all of my YouTube videos. They're by the brand New Wave. Um, they kind of look like they're copper. I think they might be, but it's like a nonstick pan. And they come with nice lids and they have a nice little vent and the reason why i like these and use these for my videos is because they are induction safe so i can use them on my induction burner on this countertop instead of on my regular stove but i would recommend them for the regular stove as well but honestly i've been using the same set of non-stick pots um for the last six years and they still are non-stick my mom got them for me i think she got them from kohl's the brand is called Circulon, so I'm just letting you guys know. Um, but I have a whole set. I have like big ones, smaller ones, different saute pans. And there's really only one that has lost its stick stickiness. And it's because it was overused and um, a few different people have used the pot and like burned things on it. So the nonstick coating kind of wore off. And like gradually nonstick coating will wear off. But I've had this for six years and it's still really nonstick. So I've never experienced any major issues. One thing I do wanna say is when you are using nonstick coating, obviously you don't want it to flake off in your food. So don't use metal utensils when you're cooking. Use like food grade silicone or wooden utensils or plastic spatulas. 
So that way it's not going to scrape the bottom of the pan and actually scratch that coating off and get it into your food. So the next thing we're going to recommend is this set of mesh strainers. Honestly, if you just wanted to get one big metal strainer, I think that's fine too. The smaller ones I still use, like I'll use this for a can of beans and you could even use this for like tea over a mug. But I like these metal strainers um, over the standard pasta ones for several reasons. Um, one, I think it's really easy to drain things out of and it's nice that it's like handheld. Sometimes I wish I had a standalone one, but I can actually balance this across my sink uh, sometimes as well. And the other thing that I like about them is that they're really fine. So I have some recipes that call for you to sift things through a metal strainer or maybe get a little bit of extra liquid out. But a lot of this classic pasta strainers, the holes are too big and things will fall right through. Like um, for example, my vegan lentil loaf, you're supposed to get the extra liquid from the lentils out, but you can't, you need to use a mesh strainer. Otherwise it's not gonna work. So this is really fine. I like how nothing can get through. But the other thing that I like about these is because they are metal and not plastic, is that they can double as steamers. So when I wanna steam vegetables, I actually don't have a steaming pot. I just use one of these strainers and it fits nicely into the pot like this. And then I can just put the lid on and steam my vegetables this way. So I don't have to buy a separate steamer pot. I can use it like this and then I can just take this straight out and my food is ready to go. The next thing is kind of random, but it's a canning funnel. I would never thought to get this. Again, my mom had one at her house and I saw it and I thought it was really awesome. And I was like, wait, I need one. Because some funnels, they're just like, they have that really narrow hole. Actually, I'll show you guys. Like this is a classic funnel and it has a really narrow hole. And so when you are pouring liquids into it or sometimes you can't pour it like, beans or dried goods into it because it won't fit through this hole and it also just takes forever to pour things through so sometimes you pour too much in the funnel and overflows and maybe that's just me but i don't like those i like this canning one because it's nice and wide like i can fit my fingers through it and you can pour everything in it and the other cool thing about it is the base itself is really wide too i can't tell if that's focusing but basically there's like a space in here um for the base and it fits on the narrow mason jars and the wide mouth mason jars. So it literally fits on any jar that you need. And I like it that it's so big cause I can pour when I buy things from the bulk bins, like I can pour my dried beans into mason jars or pasta, or if I'm pouring larger quantities of liquid, I don't have to be careful about how rapidly I'm pouring it in because it just falls straight through here. And it's also even great for making overnight oats and just putting it on the mason jar and being able to pour my oats and all of my other ingredients in and it's not gonna get everywhere because I've definitely done the thing where you like grab the edge of the jar and you're carefully pouring your oats in but they still spill and it's a pain in the butt. Like I'm assuming you guys have basic cookware but one thing I would recommend that you get is mini spatulas. I use these a lot in my videos and I just like them because I think they get into a lot more nooks and crannies um, versus the larger spatulas. Like sometimes when you have cans, like a can of small tomato paste or coconut cream, it's really hard to get all this stuff out and you, a spoon just doesn't work as well as a spatula. So that's why I like to use these. They're also good for mixing smaller quantities. And if you have a large blender, um, I think these are really good for getting into the bottom of your blender and getting all the stuff out. And the last thing that I'm going to recommend is getting a food scale. Honestly, I don't weigh the ingredients for most of my recipes. I probably should, but I'm lazy. And I'm also not really making baking recipes, but food scales are really nice in baking recipes or just in regular life. This was really cheap. Honestly, I think it was less than $20 on Amazon, but it totally works and I like it because it also transfers between like grams and ounces and everything and you can tear it. So I can put a bowl on here and then set it to zero and then weigh my ingredients in a bowl. And I use this the most often when I want to divide things in half. So that's, maybe it's just the type A in me, okay? But like if I have a box of pasta and I only want to cook half of it, half of it, I just want to cook half of it, so I measure it out. But then also if you're buying things in bulk, like I don't like to buy my mushrooms that are wrapped in plastic in those bins, I like to buy them in bulk instead. But if I'm following a recipe that calls for eight ounces of mushrooms, I don't really know how much it is. So it's nice to have a food scale. And if you are a baker, it's really nice to have this too, just because baking is a lot more precise than cooking. And it really is good to measure and weigh out your ingredients. So those are all my items. But while I was talking, I actually thought of a bonus one. And this is not essential to the kitchen, but I wanna show you guys. It's this canning apparatus. So basically there's like a little like metal grippy thing on one side. And I also think there's a bottle opener here too, but if you live by yourself or you just get those annoying jars of pickles or pasta sauce or whatever that you can't open and you get so frustrated and you're like, guess I'm starving tonight because I can't open that freaking jar. Get this. Again, my mom had this at home. My mom has a lot of random get gizmos and gadgets and sometimes I don't think they're necessary, but like these, I appreciate you, mom. 
Um, but this is just really great because it grips onto the edge of the can and you also get like the force of using the lever. So it, help, so it helps to pop open jars. And I've had a lot of jars that have been stuck that I haven't been able to open. And I've like asked my roommates to help me open them. Sometimes my roommates aren't even home, but I've never had a problem when I use this. So those are my 10 items, guys. Hopefully you found this helpful. It's just a basic general overview. If you want me to go more in detail, um, on more items or more kitchen skill related things, definitely let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, also please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already, be sure to click that little button down there. I post one to two new videos every single week. And leave me a comment below telling me your favorite kitchen item, uh, whether it was one of these, or maybe there's something that you think that should have been on this list, but I forgot to mention. I would be curious to know. That's it for now. I hope to see you guys in the next video and have a great rest of your day, whatever time of day it is for you. See you later, bye.